So we end up in a situation where the woman gets taken to the ground and the attacker's on top in her guard. Now maybe I end up directly in the guard, maybe a different situation, maybe I end up mounted or side mounted. Look, mm -hmm. so I end up in a more dominant position and here my legs are around Eve's body. So this is not guard, right? This is the mount position. And this is dangerous because she can't reach me, but I can reach her. So she has very little punch power and I have all power and I have gravity on my side. So she doesn't want to be here. I have the advantage. Now, if I'm inside her legs and she crosses her legs from behind my back, look, if she doesn't know jujitsu, this is equally dangerous. I can strike her. She has trouble striking me. I have gravity on my side. So it can still be very problematic unless you know jujitsu. Then you learn how to use your legs in the equation and you can make it much more powerful and defensive and effective for you from the bottom. Side mount is another option where I'm over here. These are just understanding the different position configurations and then you'll understand how valuable this one is. If I land on the side from here, I have control of the distance. I can strike at Eve, her hands are up. She might block one or two punches, but guess what? I'm gonna creep through. I'm gonna sneak in there and they're gonna land. Whether it's body shots, head shots, and then eventually I advance. In all these cases, Eve only has two hands that are protecting her from the barrage of strikes that I might deliver, right? So her goal is to get it to where she has more than two arms. She has four arms controlling me. And there are ways to get the person in the guard. Like if I'm on the side right here and she just blocks my body, go ahead, look at this, and her legs just shoot right in. And now I'm inside the guard. Or if I'm mounted, come down a little bit, which we cover in other lessons, she can slip her legs underneath mine, look, one at a time. And what she does is she just finagles her legs out. Now I'm in her guard. So I didn't even move. Eve moved around me and positioned me inside her guard because here is where the punch protection really prevails. Should we do one run through? Sure. And then we'll talk about it step by step, okay? Well, first we talk a little bit about what somebody might do for this That's position. That's true. Yeah, if he's trying to punch me, probably one of the most like likely things, as Henner already mentioned, is just to block, right? But I might even try to like get up or try to leave and try to get out. But as, as long as I'm coasting on his body and trying to set up, I'm putting myself at the perfect distance. That's a good point, yeah. These devastating blows that could be life ending or fight ending. And that's the, the, the concern here. This exact distance is what we cannot have. This is the perfect distance for a knockout blow. And that's what we're gonna combat today. So what you're gonna learn today is what's called the punch block series, which is a series of stages designed to prevent this distance from existing. We're gonna use every other possible distance, but not this one arm length distance from a postured opponent inside your guards. The only one that is absolute no-no. Are we and, doing uh, all five stages today or just four? No, we're gonna go all the way. What? It's the day, today's the day. You guys, you guys stages. have been really good. You guys deserve the best. Punch block series stages one through five. Probably one of the most neglected lessons in the history of jujitsu at BJJ schools for men or women all over the world is this particular lesson. So we're glad to be sharing with you guys today. It's gonna to be a better day. Mm -hmm. Happy Sunday, everyone. Start with stage one, here we go. We'll just do a full run through and oh. you guys will see. Check it out. And we're back in, okay? So let's talk about these. We're gonna break these down one by one and show you guys the leverage, the mechanics. And if you guys are at home with a partner, we follow along. If you're at home solo, Get in the position. You can even do these techniques solo. Just mm -hmm. boom, boom, and just kind of go through the body mechanics, body movements that Evie's gonna demonstrate with the partner right now. You got it. So here, starting from stage one, I'm controlling his head and I'm controlling his arm. I'll turn this way so you can see both sides here. So head control, arm control, that's what this is about. Now remember, I'm trying to, over one, I'm preventing Henner's retraction here. So I'm controlling his head and I'm wrapping his arm. So he can't sit up, right? If he tries sitting up, I stay close. Okay, and he can't strike with this arm. Now, what's possible is that maybe with the other arm, if I'm so, if I'm kind of low and close, that he could reach my face, which again is not potentially life-ending, uh, life-ending blow, but it could be annoying. So from here, while we're low, I can control his head, his head distance, and I can keep my head away. Okay, so if he's low, my elbow is low. If right he here, goes boom. to sit up, then I hug deeper. So now I'm just kind of hanging on his head. As he sits up, I go a little bit deeper. And so now look from this position, how I'm hanging kind of my elbow over his neck. And this is using less energy than if I were to be doing this. Think about the bicep strength that's needed to hold me close. So deep wrap here, he goes back down, right? And now I'm here, just that's kind of beautiful. keeping distance. So as a general kind of memory tip there, if he goes high, if he sits up and goes high, her elbow goes high. Watch, hug my neck high, mm -hmm. her elbow goes high. If I go low, Eve's elbow goes low. I go high, she goes high, I go low, she goes low. Beautiful follow along right there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So this is stage one. The idea is closeness, no distance for that punch. When I start to feel suffocated here, 
and I feel like I can't attack her, I may try to swim my arms inside to push off her body and check this out. So from here, I don't yeah, like and this. And if, if I do nothing, that's this is what it'll look like. He'll come inside, swim up, and get the distance that he wants. Okay? So in order to avoid him swimming into creating space, watch as his hand comes in and he pushes up my chest. Watch my arm. Oh, excellent. And I move right back down. One Beautiful. more time. So he swims inside. Look, as he comes in, I, it's not, I'm not swimming down. I go down to my pocket and then I swim north, right up towards my head here, up. And now as my arm comes over, I can bring him back down inside and underneath my armpit here. Excellent. Keep him distance. Now, the challenge is if he does that same swim, on the other side here. Okay, if I start to swim this arm, now there's a problem. I've lost his head. I've lost the distance control. So instead of swimming with that arm, well, as soon as he swims, watch, I hand it off. I hand off the head first, and now look, the arm comes down to the pocket, it swims up, and I can bring him back in. Here, and I'm nice. controlling, right? So again, he goes high, I'm hugging high, he comes low, I go low. Okay, now there is, uh, a potential problem from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is all great. It's controlling distance. But the, what this does do, if we kind of maybe turn back this way so you can see on this side, is that this it might open up an opportunity for him to do body strikes, right? To right. strike my body. Particularly on the side that Eve is grabbing my head because she's controlling my arm pretty snugly in her armpit right there. I can't punch her body or her head. It's pretty tight. But on the side where she's controlling my posture by holding my head, this arm is not being controlled fully. So even though I can't sit up, she's keeping herself close, which is the top priority, this arm is free. So Eve's pointing out that from here, if this person wants to punch in the body, they could really do some damage if I were to rip away and just go boom, And the worry is that boom, the moment I go to protect boom, this, now boom, I've done boom, what? Boom. Let go of everything. Okay, so the question is how can we respond to that body shot in a way that gives us the protection without making the situation worse, right? And without overreacting to that strike. And that's really the key to all this, is that people are gonna strike at you from different distances with different power for, on a scale from one to 10. One being the weakest, 10 being the worst, the heaviest punches. Sometimes if you overreact to a one or a two, a low punch down here, you create the opportunity for a nine or 10 because you overreacted, now they sit up and then they bring the big one after. So how do you re respond to the ones, twos, and threes, the low level punches, without creating the opportunities for the nine and 10 knockout punches that may come afterwards if you don't know what to do. So check out how she responds to that. Let me see this, so we're here. So she's here, and as I pull my body shot, look what she does. And now we're in stage two. Beautiful. Okay, let's do that one more time slower. So from here, again, on the side of the head hug, he pulls his arm back. My arm is free. Right? Now, as he does that, I do two things right now. Number one, I'm filling the space in between us with my shin, okay? So I'm blocking him with my shin, and my other arm comes and grabs around his tricep. So there's two things happening here, and this is what we'll talk about ways to block punches and to avoid strikes. You can do that by doing two things. One is filling the space, right? right. He can't reach my face because my shin is filling the space between us. And number two is preventing retraction. Right, because if I didn't do this, he she just, just had this, I would come he out just pull and his arm boom. back. So I'm preventing retraction here of his arm and filling space. That's why this is so such a great position. And you don't always need both, but in some cases, both will apply, like stage 1.5 and stage 2, which we're going to teach you now. You'll be doing both at the same time. In other stages, you'll only be preventing retraction, or you'll, like for example, stage 1, mm -hmm. right? She's only preventing retraction here. Right? But the second I pull this body shot, she fills the space and she hooks my arm to prevent retraction. And in further stages, three, four, and five, you'll be doing primarily filling of space and less retraction prevention. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then as he goes, if he tries to pull the other arm, now we come here. So there's a couple things about this position that are important. Let's turn back this way so they can see this angle here. Number one, look how wide my knees are, right? My legs are. I want my uh, calves and my shin to be directly against my forearms. I want them to be connected. Right? Touching and solid. touching, yeah, touching each other. Because if they're not, Henner can swim his arm inside and he can potentially retract his arm. So not only am I grabbing the back of his triceps, but I'm gluing my legs to my forearms here so we can't swim inside. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is that notice my head's off the ground and I'm kind of curled up on my back. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not laying flat here. Right? I, I don't feel like I can hold this position. So my legs are, if you go to this angle, they're almost like 90 degrees for my body. Right, so this is like a structure versus, versus this. This. Look at her knees to her chest. You guys, two now compressed. Now I have to use my hip flexors to push him back. But if I have this strong structure right here of this ninety degree angle, I'm just kind of framing his body. In I place. can't punch. And the more I try to punch her, the more her shin bones cut right into my biceps, and it's actually pretty uncomfortable. 
So she's using that shin, her hip is at that 90 degree angle, and she's driving it. The other knee might be slightly more flexed. So the side that I'm driving the punch on at the moment, that's the knee that's more prominently extended, that shin is more prominently pushing out, where the other one might be a little more tucked. And as I switch and punch on the other side, her knees will play this game where she's doing boom, boom. She's kind of following and putting those shin extensions on the side of the more concerning punch. Look, and as I punch over here, look at her knee. She opens it up, she puts her open hip. This one kind of tucks in a little bit, but I can't reach her because her shin is blocking and her hand is hooking. Another thing I want you to notice, <laughs> notice that my, uh, my foot is not glued to his hip. Some people think that the position is foot on the hip and knees here, but if I think of, of my legs staying to him, I can't follow his arm the way I need to. So don't worry so much about feet on the hips. Now what you do want is your feet kind of like on the inside. So look how I'm not doing this. Right, my feet are kind of resting here. Yeah, look at this. So they're kind right. of like the heels in, knees out is the idea. But these knees will flex and they'll kind of move around and the feet will float off the hips. So they're not anchored to the hips, but they're in the vicinity and the shins are anchored to the biceps. When you have this shin on the bicep, a very common mistake is people put the person's bicep too high on the knee right here. So I'm like very barely over the edge right there. So sometimes it just slips right over. You don't want that. So watch how Eve deliberately slides me down her shin. So there's no way that my bicep accidentally slips over the top there and accesses her face. And then eventually from stage two, I'm driving so much weight that watch what she does. She extends, pulls me back in, and goes back to stage one. Back into stage one here where my head, uh, controlling his head and his arm. Now one thing I did not mention about stage one, and maybe because it's just second nature to me, but I didn't even say it. But look at my legs, okay? And this is for someone who hasn't done jujitsu, this is gonna be the most awkward part of all of this. It's one thing to control a head and an arm, but it's another to think about using your legs Somebody is trying to hurt you and wrapping your legs around their torso. That's very counterintuitive. Very counterintuitive. For so if you're new, especially if this is a bad guy, why are you gonna hold him closer with your legs? But like, this is a huge part of being able to manage the distance and to kind of keep them close. Is this leg? It's called closed guard. So he's in my guard. I'm using my legs and I'm wrapping him around his torso here. And what's interesting is the higher that my my knees are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It allows me to like as if he goes to pull pull a punch over here, is that I can kind of feel when his Two arms sides. are ready to. Uh, yeah, let's do it this way. Watch this. So by having a high guard, Eve's knee is a sensor. Look at her knee right there. How it, my tricep rubs against it on the exit, and that's a trip wire. So she knows boom to bring her knee inside. So the having of the high guard allows that sensitivity because she feels my my arm touch her leg right here. If she didn't have such a high guard, I would retract my punch and there would be no sensor. I might get off two punches before she's able to insert her knee for that protection. So great to have the high guard. Not to mention, go back, mm -hmm. the higher your guard is on my back, like keeping me from sitting more facilitated, right? Like, like, like go over this, look at no hands. Mm -hmm. If she has no hands involved, hands out. And she's here, it's very annoying to sit up right now. It's like, it's hard for my torso to sit up. Put your legs down low versus this. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So a high guard just makes it heavier for me to sit up. And when Eve's objective is closeness for, for punch protection, that's a positive. That's an advantage to keep the person down and make it more challenging for the sit up. Mm -hmm. Boom, we're in stage one. Okay, mm -hmm. I pull the body shot. There's her knee insertion. How long do we stay in stage two for? This is called stage two. How long do we stay here until the person leans on us? Mm -hmm. Then you straighten both legs and you drop them back into stage one. Back to one, okay? So let's just say, maybe let's go back to two again, right? Mm -hmm. And just talk about the next distance. So we're in two. Now this is great, but if instead of putting, pushing forward, Henner sits back, okay? He sits back and I right. stay keep still with my legs two. here. Now he can strike me here. Boom. So he, he found that distance again. So now I need to fill more space. So from stage two, if Henner sits back, but uh, knees in, hips up. Stage three. This is it. Stage three. How so beautiful. now look, my knees are on his chest. My feet are just on the outside of his hips here, and my hips are up. This is the key. Hips up here. I'm protecting myself here. And again, I'm here just long enough to where he misses a strike potentially, right? And then I can let him Boom. back down in to stage one here. Now that can happen from stage two or straight from stage one. Maybe he swims and I don't swim in time. So he pushes off my chest maybe and I try to swim but he gets distance, boom. Uh, I, don't, I don't even and look, have another thought. Look, I bring my knees in and now he can't reach me. I would love to be at the distance where, remember we talked about in the beginning, go back. Mm -hmm. This is the distance right here. Posture and connection. When she brings her knees on my chest, uh, this is beautiful you guys. You guys should be more excited than you currently are, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and one thing to note about this, if you're doing this with a partner, the bad guy needs to put pressure. Because if they're sitting back, and I'm like, trying to put my 
knees on the chest, it's not going to happen. Now, if right. the top person it does not have the body weight to put that pressure, Eve can put her feet on my pelvis, knees together, and just elevate it. It's like she's cheating by wedging here, but she's still getting the sense of body extension, knees together, punch protection. So this is an okay way to kind of cheat the drill if the top person is much smaller or lighter. But if the top person has a weight advantage over the bottom person in practice, I want you to lean on these and sit up. And I don't want these feet on the hips. I want them hooked around the hips, like on the outside, like just mm -hmm. kind of wedged out here. But I don't want them actually stepping on the hips. So her hands mm -hmm. are up. And then from here, when she's ready, she bends. She lowers me back in. Let's talk about that descent. That was excellent. Mm -hmm. So I sit up. Her knees come in. She's wedging me. So when she feels like I'm leaning assertively towards her, she, imagine her hips are like a spine of a book. She's going to fold this book close. She's going to shut the book knees to her own chest and as she does that she has really good protection slowly boom and then she lets me back in and then now we're in stage one back okay. to one always mm -hmm. so that was called a one three one and then one two three one like we talked about if i punch the body she inserts mm -hmm. the knee punch the other side she beautiful knee and shin insertions great hooks great blocks if i lean forward she would drop me right now but if i pull away she has to immediately fill that space so eve doesn't get to choose which distance we play from. I choose by creating the distance or by driving forward where we go next. She just accommodates that with the proper technique and making sure she's never at that perfect striking range. Mm -hmm. Nice knees. So that's, stage three is great. There's one problem from here. And Tanner tries to stand up. He does this and I have nothing. Right now he can, he can take advantage of that distance again. So from stage three, if he goes to stand up, watch hips down, feet stay connected Boom. to his hip here. Okay, and now try to reach my face, not happening. Okay, so I'm extending my legs. My feet are like a seat belt across his hips here, right there. And my legs are slightly bent, but they're strong. I'm keeping him, like these are strong legs. They're not stick straight. Um, they're slightly bent, but but there's, there, I'm holding him in place yeah. here, okay? Yeah, he definitely, there's something. He hold his body weight here, wee. Fine. <laughs> so from here, stage four, and if he keeps leaning, guess what? We go right back in to stage one. Same as always, okay? That's the yeah. goal. The goal should be clear, friends. Stage one is your best friend. This is where you want to live. Stages two, three, and four, five, they're vacation homes. How long do you spend over there? One week, two weeks, then you get tired of home base. Go back home, get some work done. <laughs> okay, so vacation at stages two, three, and four, live in stage one. It's the safest stage because you have the closest body position and the least chance of damage there. Ironically, right? You think you're safer if I'm further mm -hmm. away. Right? And there is some truth to that. If I'm out the house all the way across the street, you're safe. We're good. But if I'm not all the way across the street and I'm in this striking zone, you're, I'm much safer. You're much safer if I'm in stage one. So it's counterintuitive, but that's often the case with jujitsu. The exact, the exact opposite of what you would do naturally is probably the safest thing to do for your survivability in a dangerous altercation. And that's why, but here's the crazy part. Once you learn it, it's like, oh, it makes perfect sense. It's counterintuitive if you know nothing. The second you know a little something, you go, wow. Gosh, so you're telling me the best thing I can do if someone's trying to kill me is to hug them. That's pretty much what we're saying. Welcome to Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> Women in Power. Here we go. <laughs> so let's go do a little recap. Stage one, two, one, one, three, one, and one, four, one, which we have to do a direct four, which we haven't done. Yeah, let's talk about that first. Okay. So from stage one, if Henner just wants to straight up stand up, what I want to do is this. Look how my legs kind of stay connected. I want to put pressure on his head and kind of make him work for it. I don't want to just let him stand yeah. up and kind of get that distance. So I'm holding, I'm like holding, 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 and then at the very last minute, boom, I push uh, him out, my hips drop, and my feet come in. Beautiful. So from stage one, hold on to it, but don't be so committed that, you know, at some point you have to let the stage four happen, then the legs come in, and we're oh, here, and if boom. it's reaching, we go back in to stage one. And we call that, that, that idea of holding a little longer, this the, the rubber band effect, mm -hmm. right? It's like, if you want to really sting him and catch him off guard, you, want, you don't want to just let him go and then he stands up on his own clock. You want to hold him as if you don't want him to get away, Hold him, annoy him, annoy him. Like you're pulling back on the rubber band, pulling back, pulling back. No, don't take my rubber band, don't take it. And at the last second you let it go, it goes pow, and it accomplishes yeah. the objective. But they get away, but you got you got him on the way out because it's slingshot. Right. It, it surprises me on the way in, the way out. Like I don't know, and I can't get my perfect distance because I was held so close, and then suddenly I'm so far. So my exit timing, the timing of my distance creation is not in my control. She took control of the timing of my exit by hanging on and being kind of annoying there during the exit and during the standing process. That's true for stages three as well. If I'm here and she's holding and I'm pushing off her body, she holds and suddenly I'm like, whoa, that's true. I didn't expect that. I expected to hold and then I finally felt like I'm free. And then I'm like, wait a minute, how did these get in here so fast? Because she controlled the timing of the exit. So interestingly, everyone's always worried about 
how to bring them in to avoid punches. The reality is getting them out in a way that prevents punch distance is equally if not more important, right? Because as I'm creating distance, if I'm successful at creating that distance on my clock, I'm much more likely to land a dangerous strike. So she's disrupting that with the timing and the rubber band effect and it's looking really good. So, so should we drill this now? Yes. So one, two, one. We're all doing this. Lay down, you guys. Get ready. And if you're by yourself, you can do it by yourself as well. We'll okay. show you how. One, two, one. One, three, one. One, four, one. Then one, two, three, four, one. Love that. Okay. It's a flow drill. Flow drill. Let's do it. So we'll do it and count it together. Actually, let's just talk about this for a second. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Sorry. I know we keep saying we're going to drill, and then I keep doing a false, false start. Um, but how do we even get to stage one? Right. right? We talked about stage one. Guy lands here. But if he lands here, and if it's like, if there's punches coming at you, right? If he's, oh, it's like you may oh. not even feel like, how do I even bring him down? Okay. So there's two things to consider. Number one is your ultimate goal of the arm positioning. So as I come in, I want my arm to start like almost like in this prayer position, and they come up, and now I can make sure that when I bring him in, uh, my arms are on the outside of his arms, right? As opposed to if he's punching and I do this, now his arms are on the outside of mine and he has kind of the upper position there. So hands inside and they come up and around. That's one part. The other part is the legs, right? We want to start activating this closed guard as soon as possible. And it might even be that I use this to bring him to me, right? To bring him down. So you can practice from here. Let's start kind of in this upright position. Now bad guy very slowly kind of simulate punches. Arms come up and over and you bring them down. Stage one. Okay? Go back. The other option, cross your legs right there. Mm. If I don't move at all, mm -hmm. you're doing a sit up and you're hugging my neck and then pull me down, push off the ground on the feet. Look at that. So there's, no matter what, one way or another, whether he comes down or you come up. We're closing the distance. Someone's coming to someone so we can lock this up and get a, a nice stage one beginning. Mm -hmm. Coming back down and we're doing all the stages now. Ready? Mm -hmm. So one. Maybe practice some swims. Yeah, practice some swims here. Swim on the head side. Remember, hand off the head first and then swim. Mm -hmm. And now we're here. 1.5, stage two, and then back down. Okay, and now from here, I hold, and I hold, and I push. Oh, so annoying. And now we're in stage three. Knees in, Beautiful. the outside. And make sure you guys check each other out right here. Do a little check, like I'm verifying. These are solid. These are dangling right outside. Her mm -hmm. hands are up. She lets me back in. I didn't expect that. And now she got me back in stage mm -hmm. one. And now he wants to go to four. I hold, I hold, I hold, I hold. Last minute, push it oh. And now we're here in stage four. Oh. And now from here, oh. I can bring him back in. Back to stage one. Excellent, and now watch, all in order. Mm-hmm. Two, three, hips down, four, four, and then bring it back in. One. That's one through four. Now you guys are ready Almost for stage there. five. Any questions? Friends, you guys enjoying this party? Punch block series, survivability, swimming, staying close. Stage five happens. Lay down, please. Mm -hmm. Anytime we're in stage four, and I'll move this way a little bit here. Anytime we're in stage four, and the person is not leaning. Look, I'm pull me in. Not leaning. That's that's stage five. So is this stage five, where I'm just disconnected and I'm far away from here. My head might be getting. Is it cut off? Is it in? <laughs> cut off. TV's in. In. <laughs> TV's in. So I'm in right now. Great. What's up, guys? <laughs> so stage five. We need to talk about this. So the feet are both on the hips. Right? I can't go towards her, but I'm not leaning, so she can't drop me down. What you want to avoid, first and foremost in stage five, is allowing someone to stand over you in this non-committal position without driving weight on you. That's not acceptable. So Eve either wants me driving and dropping to stage one, or she wants me further back, where I'm less of a threat to her, okay? The way she can accomplish that is wedge one foot on the hip, lift her hips up, boom, axe kick, boom, and now I don't want to play here anymore. No, thank you. Okay, so what you need to do is, in Eve's position, is you want to make it to where it's so unsafe for the suspect to stand over you at this semi-committed attack position that they go, wow, now they are in your perfect striking range. Not fist punch striking, right? Because this is a beautiful equation. Think about this. Normally, the danger of striking range for us is that if Eve, put your fist on my face, does this, she's also strikeable. You understand? That's why that's a dangerous equation and we don't want to rely on strikes as a means of victory or protection because you put yourself within striking range. But guess what? There are certain jujitsu striking ranges that allow you to have effectiveness against the suspect or the bad guy and they cannot have effectiveness against you. And that particularly is utilizing your legs and your whole torso to create additional range. 
that they cannot overcompensate or overcome with a single arm. Something so, like this too, like right here. Look, this, oh. is a, this, is, this is a jiu jitsu striking range because now Eve has full extension and effectiveness, but I don't. You guys understand the math here? So it's, we're very particular about the moments in the fight where we deploy strikes because we want to make sure they can be done without being fired back on. That's very important. And the standing position, well, Neil, laying down here, Woman Empowered 2.0, classic guard get We use a lot of that. But in stage four, oh, sorry, stage 4.5, stage five right here, there is absolutely a similar chance for Eve to retract and lift her hips up. Boom, look at this. One, for, look at that. There's no way I can reach her right here. Look at that, it's like a nice magazine cover. Like, yeah, Ugh. someone take a picture. Cool. Is this a screenshot? Just... That's dramatic, you guys. <laughs> that was like the old Black Belt magazine covers where like, <laughs> picks on my dad, you know, like foot in the neck and like arm lock and extended, like the classic days. Look back, they're online. Um, <clears throat> the point is, she can strike without getting struck. How beautiful is that? And she's going to use that striking advantage in order to create a sense for me of what the heck am I doing at this range? I have no effectiveness and I better back up or commit wholeheartedly to where I can get through these strikes, at which point she drops them back into stage one. So just a few in instructional details on how you're doing those sure, so well. On this. So for, for, for one, there's likely going to be one leg kind of in front, especially if someone's trying to strike. They're usually winding up on one side, so they're going to have I'm right-handed, so my right leg is back, which means my left back. leg is forward, which means it's here. Which, yeah, so ideally on the front side leg, my foot is going to wedge on his hip. Now, if I just try to extend my leg, I don't get much range, right? So the idea is I'm pushing off his hip. Watch that my hips raise up. So now that my hips are off the ground, I can coil my leg. I flex my foot, and now boom, boom. right? So I'm extending my hips for the kick here, okay? And this is a super powerful kick. Now, as I extend, oh. I can also fall up with an axe oh. kick right here. Boom, oh. as many as we need. Jackie Chan movie. Yes, oh. yes, we do it better than that, just saying. <laughs> um, scoot back this way a teeny bit this way. There we go. The other thing is like, if I, well, uh, if I feel like I can't really, you know, they're almost like just out of range a little bit, I can also reach oh. right, right? Oh. I can oh. use oh. anything here to get him back. What he should feel like is these are two snakes that are ready to strike at any moment. And so at first they're coming and then they go, oh shoot, like these are weapons that are being they used. They bite, they bite. They bite. And so that's how you have to think of your legs. They're not just there to, you know, block him or whatever. These are now become weapons. And we have to remember and learn all the different ways we can use those weapons when we're on our back. And let there be no mistake about it. There have been many knockouts in the UFC very early yeah. on and even very recently of these so-called up kicks. Well, it's actually illegal, the, right? For certain of these positions, like if your knee's on the ground. Well, that's different. If I'm right? touching down, if yes. I'm grounded, you can't kick me in the I face. Can't. It's so that's powerful, they don't allow it. But the second I only have my two yes. soles of my feet and nothing else on the ground, mm -hmm. she's allowed to kick. And there have been many cases where people are here and then they go up with an axe kick, look, all the way, boom, and they kick and the person is completely knocked out from there. So using the strongest part of your body, your legs, your back, your glutes, to throw an up kick or to throw an axe kick is extremely powerful and devastating to the torso, face, knee, whatever it is. And then I back up. Now she's laying down and I'm standing over her concerned about engaging because if I get any closer, I get kicked. Boom. So now we have an awkward situation where I'm still over her, but she's down. So here's what we want you guys to remember. Rule number one, always keep your sights aligned. And by sight, you mean these sights between her head and her foot. It's a straight line. I should be on the other end of that straight line, meaning she doesn't want to be here ever in like this, where I have this. You can show it from this angle so they can see. So I want my foot straight up aligned here. So if I move, so does she. Because this, I wouldn't want this or I wouldn't want that. Because now I have Yeah, now he can come around the side, right? Not just because she can kick me more effectively with that up leg, but because she can block my hips. Boom, and she can stop my momentum more effectively if I were to attack her because her sights remained aligned. When I move off center, so she's here mm -hmm. and I move, she uses her support leg to pivot her torso in this turtle pivot like fashion. And if I move the other way, she uses her other foot. So she always uses the foot on the direction that I'm moving, okay? Or in the direction that I'm moving. So if I, I go here. I coiled my leg is. I don't want it to be out here. The more out I it move, is, the right? easier it is to slap and go. Mm -hmm. So she keeps it coiled because now I can't reach her ankle, mm -hmm. but if I step in to reach her ankle, I'm within kicking range. If Eve's leg is, let's rotate all the way, head over here, please. Sure. If Eve's leg is more dangly in stage five like this, and he's just kind of out here like pivoting around a little bit, we're moving. If it's like this, now kick me, Eve. She can't kick, but I can slap. Boom, and I can go. But if Eve's coiled leg is like a rattlesnake, look, I can't grab her, but she can't kick me. Go ahead. We're too far. But watch this. Don't kick. When I step in and I can grab her, I'm also kickable. kickable. So by keeping her leg coiled, she can kick every time I grab, I am within kicking range. That's a very important equation to create, and she's the one who controls that. 
What's the most dangerous kind of rattlesnake? The coiled kind. Because if the rattlesnake is laying on the sun like this, fully extended, you, and you put your hand right here, it can't jump. Okay. It can only pounce from the coil. So the second it starts to rattle up and coil up, and that's when you got to worry about the pounce that's going to come right after. So Eve has to have her leg like, always coiled so it has more pounce factor and more bite. Cool? So now, if I move this way, she moves. If I move this way, she moves. And then eventually, throughout this movement, I get frustrated if I'm going to attack her, and I want to commit wholeheartedly to the knockout haymaker punch. And as I do, she only has one concern. Stop my center mass, my torso. So I go, boom, she slows me down, and then she lets me back in, stage one, and we're back to here. Mm -hmm. So you basically go back to four into one, right? So from five to four to one. Quick temporary layover at stage four, just to stop their momentum, but really it's five to one mm -hmm. with a quick block at four to stop that initial drive. Yeah, cool. I do think that that's probably one of the most common mistakes, though, is not like enforcing the stop, right, on the way in. It's kind of like thinking, oh, I'm just going to bring them into one from five. Yes. So I actually do like the, the, the thought of no, actual stop. I'm actually stopping them in four so and then bringing them to so one. So it's not just a quick layover. It's like they're sleeping one night in one in, night, one and night then, in, 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 yeah, in that region. Yes. Okay. So she's here. Her leg is up. I attack. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. Look, one swing happens. And then now I'm bringing back in. Drop. Excellent. Okay. So we're getting into some bonus details now on stage four, five, one, three. What are the, the stuff that we don't usually share? especially on video, but that they deserve because they're being so it's good for really us. It's a really special day, you guys. We're giving out all the goods. Good okay. stuff. Punch block series. Well, Plus, it's I, so I think, neglected. I think that like now that you've seen it all, it's important to, to go back to the principles of what we're doing here, mm. right? Because now it's like you're thinking technique, but we already talked about distance management, but there's something else here that is an extremely important principle in jiu-jitsu and the reason why this is the bread and butter of you know Gracie Combatives and now Women Empowered as well, um, which is energy conservation. Okay, so... What's even more beautiful than being able to avoid strikes is that while I'm doing this, think about it, I'm on my back, essentially just changing my legs, right? Doing this, blocking, boom. But I can actually conserve energy from there. So I'm in this position, conserving energy, breathing, managing distance. And what is he doing the entire time? Missing strikes, like exhausting. So the goal of this is not only to preserve, uh, you know, your face and uh, to, to not get punched with those nines and tens. But it's also this idea that, because if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I'm here and I know that the person who's going to attack me is going to be bigger, heavier, and stronger than I am, then I'm not going to be able to just defeat this guy. What has to happen is somehow I have to keep my energy, right? Or conserve my energy while he exhausts his, right? So somehow we're both exhausting our energy, but the idea is that we get him to this point. And once we're equal or, or below, that's when I may have an opportunity to do one of the many submissions in jiu-jitsu or one of the many escapes. But until this happens, none of that's possible. So it's almost pointless to learn submissions and escapes and all that if you haven't learned this. Because if I'm going to go against somebody stronger, chances are I'm not going to be able to pull out an arm lock or a choke or anything if they're full energy and strength. Um, and I haven't really used my punch block series to get that kind of energy conservation element in there. So the other important part of this is while you're drilling is, you know, making sure that we're not ever uh, using too much energy in one stage. That's why there's five. Imagine if we just said, okay, stage one, and that's all you got. Then you would be in stage one. Death gripping. Right, not letting them go. And think about all the energy you would exhaust while that's happening. But you try to keep it. And then the moment they get out, great, stage two. Okay, we can keep breathing and keep conserving our energy. So that's another thing to keep in mind here. The other thing I, I like to think about in terms of timing is the idea that all we're trying to do, again, no one stage is perfect, right? Otherwise, we would have just said, hey, here's the stage, and that's the end of the class. There's five. And the reason for that is, again, this idea of timing and what their objective is. You know, if their objective is to land a strike, they have a certain calculation in their mind of where your face is and where that strike is going to land. And the moment that happens and the distance changes, now they have to do a new calculation. So now they have another calculation. Maybe it's to stand up. And to do this, but now once they've done that, now they're in stage four and the distance has changed again. So it's all about, you know, this idea of if they have a calculation in their mind of what's going to land a strike and in that moment, the distance changes. So we're constantly changing the distances. That's how this, this works. That's how it works efficiently, right? Because like you've said, if you just bear down hundred percent energy, you're going to hold them. You might even stop their punches, but you're going to burn equally fast. The trickier way, the David versus Goliath way to defeat someone and neutralize their energy efficiently is to constantly disrupt their distance to where they're just missing punch after punch after punch. 
either it's getting suffocated or it's missing altogether because they're too far away. Mm -hmm. and, and there's in each of these stages, right? Each one of these stages can be beaten, right? Each right. one of them, if, if, they, if someone right. was in it long enough, they could figure out a way around it or they could beat it. And that's why, again, you need the, 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 the quick transition into the next stage is what makes it so effective. Powerful. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. If you could lay down, please, and we get sure. to stage three. Mm -hmm. In terms of beating the stages, right? What could go wrong during these? And let's talk about some of those contingency plans. So if Eve is here, stage one is pretty straightforward, right? We're very trapped. And if I sit up or pull a punch, she brings her knee inside. There's a stage two. There's not much for me to do. If I'm attacking her, she's good. The only thing I can do is get away from stage two and disconnect from it. So she goes to stage three. Now stage three is start where it starts to get a little bit disconnected. And at this point, the person on top may very well try to throw legs out of the way. And if Eve's knees are tight, but her feet are like very dangly, this might happen where I go boom and I get around her legs. I could see someone who's blocked by two knees say, wait a minute, I want to just push these legs out of the way. It's not unreasonable to think that someone would just throw the legs out of the way and then dive in for a potential strike. That being said, how can we stop stage three from being trampled that way? So knees up, hits up, watch what her foot does. Look at that, full lock. And she extends the leg, fully locking it out, coming back. So what happens is as I push the leg, she rolls, she wedges my hip, her foot hooks very assertively behind my back, but her leg is fully extended right now so that he can't go. And now as I come back, her knee's right back on my chest. So she goes very strong. It runs right into my rib cage and I can't throw it out. So the point is, stage three legs cannot be dangly feet. Mm -hmm. Stage three legs are like chopstick feet. Yeah, they're right there. And as I throw this way, it hooks. Throw this way, it hooks. But her shoulder rolls her shoulders. Yes, it's gonna, we're gonna roll your body so you don't compromise your knee or your hip joint in the practice. So it rolls and it locks out and it hooks. Very effective stage three, kind of extra layer of protection when the person who's attacking doesn't just go linear, instead they go sideways and try to throw those legs out of the way. You're gonna need those body hooks. Now stage four, they stand up, they block, block, block. Now listen, from stage four, if the person is leaning, they can't throw your legs out of the way, they're stuck. They have to disconnect to then throw the legs out of the way and then attack you. So what that tells us is there is a moment when I have feet on the hips right here that in theory as I'm leaning, I stop leaning, Eve should be striking. Boom! So that I can't grab her ankles and throw them out of the way. However, if she's one second late and I am effective and I get here, watch what she does. She turns and she shoots her legs back in. Go back. And this ties into another women empowered lesson, shrimp escape, which is so incredibly important because if I get past her guard, her survivability in many ways is contingent on her ability to recompose, to reachieve the guard efficiently and safely, right? So once yeah, again. Now, now, especially that we believe in the guard so much, we understand that having our legs between us is everything. If you right? love the guard, you love shrimp escape. So watch for how this works. I throw the legs, she touches and she turns. And as I descend, she blocks and she shoots her legs right back in and she reestablishes the guard, okay? Stage one, that's a Different class, but it's a... But it's tied in, tied right? In. Essentially, shrimp in. escape is guard protection because if they get past your guard and you don't have this ability, then your guard crumbles and now they're past and now you're in a more dangerous position. So always focus on reachieving the guard. All roads lead back to Rome. All bottom fight situations, if you're on the bottom, lead back to you getting them in the guard because of the trust that you've achieved in the punch block series and its ability to keep you safe against even the most aggressive attacker on top. Punch protection for life. The guard is your best friend. And there's one preemptive just prior to that. Eve, if you're standing up in stage five here, and let's say we're doing this, right? She's kind of further distant and I'm like this. And without me being able to kick her, she is able to grab my leg and throw it out of the way. If I don't know what to do, she could have come in and attack, right? Go back. So check this out. If you're in stage five and they grab it, go ahead. You roll over and you come back and you block. Very good technique. One more time, do it slower. So when she grabs, freeze. When she grabs this ankle, which way is she going to throw my leg? Somebody. If she throws it that way, I'm gonna block her. Watch. So she's naturally gonna do a leg drag where she pulls it across my body, but wait. But what happens, wait. Okay. But what happens is, hold it please. Okay. I'm gonna tighten up my core slow. Watch what happens to my body, do it slow. No. Go back. <laughs> look, look, look. So I use my core, I tighten up my whole leg, core, torso. So as she grabs it, I use that to roll my body 90 degrees and watch more importantly what the other leg does. Do it slow. Boom! That's called the rollover technique, you guys. So anytime one leg is removed from the equation, your torso turns and the opposite leg lands right on their pelvis. This is one of the best, you guys. One more time, slow, tight core, block. 
recover, back to stage four. If she leans, I drop her. If she doesn't lean, boom, I break her face. I axe kick, I kick the knees, and I get out of here, and I'm disconnecting. Then we do the other side. She grabs, I tighten up my core, I roll over. I replace and recover, and we go, boom. So it's beautiful, right? Is that as we get further out in these punch block series stages, stage two, stage three, stage four, the further out, the less control you have of the subject, right? And then with less control, they have more mobility in their body and they may try to go around your legs and having methods to be able to hook the body, to roll over and block the hip, methods or recover with the shrimp escape if they do get around, blocking them and re reinserting your legs. These are all so valuable. And then to what avail, to what avail is all of this guard protection, maintenance and recovery being done? Well, like Eve said, number one, burning energy. Their energy meter is just going like the video games in the old days when you'd be a fighting street fighter and then this little bar would be shrinking, 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 shrinking because they're using too many strikes and they're burning. That's real. Street fighter is for real. When someone's, ask Evandra, the video games, right? So this boom, 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 just depleting, deplete. And then what do you think when you're starting to deplete? If you're the guy on the depletion, you go, oh my gosh, I better not keep attacking because I may get zeroed out. And if I get submitted or attacked, or mortal combated while my meter is at the lowest possible place, you die easier because you have no energy left. So let's show just briefly, not even teaching, some of the options of women empowered after the depletion happens. Sure. What are we even gonna do? So Eve is down here. So I punched for 30 seconds and now I'm exhausted. So now we're back in stage one. Are right? you thinking submission or guard get up right I mean, now? I don't know, I'm just thinking like, you know, just thinking guillotine chokes. You guys, you can choke him. You can break him. That's a guillotine choke. Beautiful technique. Uh, maybe he comes in and he grabs you by the hair. Look, look, make an angle and boom, break his arm. We've talked about hair grab defenses. We can talk about get up, look, guard get up. I'm exhausted now from all these punches. Now she can kick that out kick, and get up. That kick, illegal in the UFC. That kick, illegal in the UFC, legal in the streets. <laughs> the point is, all of this is so much easier after they're depleted. And it's, the whole, all, it's only possible, to be honest. It's only like, possible. For, we almost have to think of it that way is that, yeah, this is the means to be able to then deploy all these other submissions and escapes that we've learned, but this always comes first. We have to always think this first. If we get into, if we fall into a position and we start thinking, and especially for the women of Howard students, that, I'm not gonna lie, it's fun to think about like, oh, I'm gonna choke this person, or I wanna arm lock all the submissions and cool you know, techniques that are learned. None of that matters if we don't understand this first. This is always first. And anytime, if you guys are practicing, especially when you're preparing for your pink belt test, uh, this is like the number one principle that we would be looking for in the ground freestyle development. Do you understand the idea that when you fall, when you get, end up on the ground, this is always our first priority and just survive, 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 tread water, tread water, conserve energy. And then boop, there's an opportunity take it. That's, that's crazy. That's and the thing is this for women, it's just so unfathomable that they actually be in their own minds many times that they actually be able to physically defend and prevail and escape against someone much stronger than them. Especially if you don't do jujitsu, you just go, wait, how is this even possible, right? The answer we're giving you today, you deplete the heck out of their energy through punch protection, energy efficiency, and distance management. And then they're <laughs> huffing and puffing after two minutes or one minute, and you still have some gas in the tank. And at that point, you deploy one of these techniques. But this is the only realistic way which is why we feel that so many other martial arts that tell women, go, hit them harder, hit them faster, and go, 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 go. Not that there isn't a place for that in self-defense, right? A very abrupt attack early on to prevent this from even coming to this. But when it's worst case scenario, which is what we specialize in, go, 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 is actually how you, no, 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 want to behave. Because you're going to burn energy faster than the opponent. And then no matter what your strategy or techniques are, after you're fully depleted, you can't deploy them. It's not even there for you anymore because you have no energy to utilize or to deploy those techniques. So high aggression, go fast, hit harder, hit faster. It kind of makes sense if you have the physical advantage. Sure. But if you're the physically inferior one in that altercation just by the nature of things, whether it's a woman against a man or a man against a larger man, if that's the nature of the engagement, thinking I'm going to overwhelm them with aggression and strikes and violence and power and explosiveness, that's the quickest way to defeat in our opinion. You have to outsmart them. You have to David and Goliath. You have to do what Hoist so successfully did in UFC 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is defend. Let the big boy attack and burn. You just got to do it safely, and they will make the mistake. And when they do, both in their energy usage and in their tactical deployment of their limbs, and when they make a mistake, we're going to capitalize on it, and they're going to regret everything, how many strikes they threw and how many grabs they did, because those were all the opportunities that we needed.
Friends, women empowered. Ladies, that's the real question. Ladies, are you out there? And if so, does this make sense for you? Forget everyone else. Does this make sense for women's self-defense that this has to be the way? Not just, we just saw one technique today with a few other variables, but this idea of survive first, neutralize, save energy, deplete theirs, and then seize the opportunities when they inevitably present themselves. Does this make sense to you guys? And I do you have any doubts? Do you have any questions about it? Right. You know, because with any position, you, again, we could say, well, what about this or what about that? And again, that's why there's 600 plus techniques in the Thank jiu you. that we're going to all cover, you know, but it's important to understand like how valuable this is and how this really does cover the uh, majority of the behaviors from a potential random bad guy, right? A, a random person trying to attack somebody. They're either going to overwhelm you one of two ways, either by incapacitating you with a potential choke, right? Or like kind of smothering you or with punches. And this is the way to defend ourselves against punches. Okay, we're going to do a Gracie giveaway right now. It's going to be dope. Eat, go put that on before they see Ooh, it. You go throw that on. Goodness, and then you can come back in once you're fully dressed. Okay. Listen, you guys, but okay. while Eve is doing that, I want to talk about something else right now. Women Empowered 2.0, completely refurbished after 10 plus years of the original Women Empowered, is now available. But more impressively and more remarkably, there's a new instructor certification program that people who complete Women Empowered 2.0, this, this Women's Self-Defense program, can actually go through an instructor certification program and learn how to teach women empowered. Now, what's remarkable about it is unlike every other one of our programs, Gracie Combatives, Gracie Bullyproof, Master Cycle, which are exclusively taught in certified training centers, Women Empowered has been released essentially and is now open to be taught in any institution, location, church, school, uh, college campus, military base, organization, corporation, anywhere. You can teach this, uh, gym, fitness center, you can teach Women Empowered 2.0 anywhere. The thought being, if women aren't going to come to jujitsu, we're going to certify thousands of instructors and we're going to send the instructors to them. And since Women Empowered is the best introduction to jujitsu for women, this is what we're doing. It's the first course that we've made an open certification. What are the requirements? You go to Women Empowered, you score 95 or higher on your pink belt test. That's the test signifying completion of the Women Empowered program. You score 95 or higher. Once you do, you qualify to apply for the instructor certification program. Now that pink belt test can be taken in person at a certified training center, or it can be done via video evaluation where you're home with your friends and loved ones, practice for the next six, seven, eight months, 12 months, whatever it takes, and then send in your video just like this, demonstrating all the techniques, individual and in combination, freestyle fight simulation, all the exercises we show you exactly what we wanna see. And if you understand the psychology and the techniques, you can apply for Women Empowered um, Pink Belt Test, right? You can take the test video uh, via video evaluation. If you pass 95 or higher, you apply for Women Empowered Instructor Certification Program. Now that process is a 60 day online course of instructor training. And then if you pass that 60 day online course, you get invited to California for the live evaluation here at Gracie University headquarters, right down the street from where we live here. If you pass that live evaluation, the four days in person here, and we verify your techniques and we verify your teaching methodologies, then you get to become a women empowered instructor, certified instructor. And you're there representing Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Women Empowered, and you're doing this with the understanding that your goal is to create, absolutely create the dream and the opportunity for women to learn Jiu Jitsu in a very welcoming and safe way, hoping, of course, secretly, that one day they get so excited that they have to advance and move on to regular Gracie Combatives or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in a safe, controlled setting where they can do it and grow with their friends and loved ones. But that's the idea. Women Empowered is the intro to Jiu Jitsu for women all over the world. It's already happening. The question is, you know, 10 years from now, when thousands of instructors, women empowered all over the world, will you be one of them? Now, women, you can do this ICP alone. Men, if you're like, wow, that sounds really fun. I would like to teach women self-defense. Yes, but there's one requirement. Any man who wants to go to the women empowered ICP must do so accompanied by a woman. In other words, you guys must get certified as a tandem, as a partnership. And then you will be listed on our website as a partnered teaching, women empowered teaching team. This is very important. Women can be listed solo. Men can only be listed with a partner. And that partnership must remain while you're teaching women empowered. You must teach in tandem because there will be no women's self-defense classes that are not taught with a woman at the helm. We've tried it for a hundred years. And until Eve and Victoria showed up and said, look, we're going to help you guys with this. All of a sudden women started listening. Whereas before that it was like two giant tall guys doing techniques and these little women watching saying, oh my gosh, 
that's cool for them, but how can I do that? No, women have to be there because women want to watch women do jujitsu, not men. Now, men can be there as the bad guy, but that's about it with some good teaching, of course, information and love like me and Eve did today. So Eve, come back in, you guys. Yes. Um, I just wanted to show this Check this out, you guys. We're gonna give away one of these geese right now. We do a Gracie giveaway every time we go live. Lion, this lion, is the lion gee. Look at this. Lion Get down low, show them the back. This Get low so we can uh, see. Hold look on, at... wait, there's more. Um, the patch Go show the them back. low, go show them closer. Look at that, go show them right up in there. Look at that, you guys, the lion collection. And look at the inside. We weren't supposed to show anybody, I know, I know. but that's the inside of the lion gee. You guys, this is my favorite gee. I'm a Leo, so I'm like, yes. <laughs> Love it. And then, this. even more secretly, which we're not supposed to show, Get real close. When it comes to chokes, there are no tough guys. Everyone goes to sleep. Eddie Gracie. So the Lion Collection is coming out in a few months. So you won't get it. Whoever enters to win. Ladies, um, we want to talk mainly to the ladies. I want to know what your rank is. Okay, I want to know what your jujitsu rank is and what school you train at. So right now, enter your school, your rank, and um, we want to know. So if you put your school and your rank, make sure you indicate the city of your, whatever your school name is. Or if today was your first time seeing jujitsu. Whatever. Yes. You know, if you're, if you're fairly new to jiu-jitsu, you're a white belt, just so you know. That would be your rank. So this gi is available for men and women, right? I have my lion collection in the closet over there. Eve has hers. These are just pre-production samples. The official ones are coming down the road a few months. So, you, you know, so whoever wins this drawing right now, we're going to choose someone right now. So in the chat, enter your school and your jiu-jitsu rank. And we're going to choose someone to win the lion collection when it comes out. It's going to be a woman's size, so don't even try it, man. No. Oh yeah, today, today, men can't enter. Today. Sorry guys, yes. I'm sorry guys. Today is a woman's only. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, men, we'll give you guys yours on a different day. Lion Collection will come out in a couple and months a, and you're gonna get hooked up. In terms of sizing, like I'm an F3. So we'll, yeah, we'll F3. figure out sizing later, but if you know your are And I'm an A3, so we're all threes in this family. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna hook you guys up. So you're entering right now fast, keep punching. But ladies, it, men, women, women empowered is the one. Men, if you're watching this, the main value today was what? Get your sister, wife, mom, Grandma, they also auntie. probably got their own value. I yeah, mean, that's true. Good, that's true, man. You probably, if you train BJJ at a regular school, a sport, jiu-jitsu school, you may have never seen this in your life. So, congratulations. You now know how to block punches from the guard. It's not going to do you any good unless you practice it, or you get to a school where they actually will teach this on a semi-regular basis. So you actually develop some muscle memory with skills that you can actually apply in a street fight. Um, but cool, nonetheless, that you joined us, women. If you joined us and you've been on the fence about jiu-jitsu, get off the fence. Jiu-Jitsu is for you. This is not a guy thing that some women do. It's a human thing that not enough women participate in. And we have women from all walks of life. This is not like a, so you know, women in their 20s who all want to be fighters. That's not the kind of women that we have. I mean, there might be one or two, but majority, we have women from that range from age 12 all the way to age 60 something. We have, you know, 60 plus year old women so in awesome. our women empowered class Pat. that are pink belts. Like these... It's, that's the most beautiful The best about, thing in the so. people who would never in their minds want to do jujitsu are doing women empowered. So ladies, if you're out there, find a certified training center at graceuniversity.com slash CTC. Charlie, Tom, Charlie, CTC. And find a school. We have schools, hundreds of schools all over the world who teach the women empowered program the same way we do. If you're not comfortable learning online via video, then get out there and learn in person at a CTC. These institutions that are certified to teach the women empowered program and, um, and then we're, uh, so good. If you don't have a CTC near you, you can do it via video. Now, men, if you have a wife or a loved one who should be doing jujitsu, just make sure, yeah, just make sure it's a new school that we haven't done before. I want to make sure it's a new school, not one that we've already chosen. Can you want to bring it over here, Eve, please? Yeah. So, men, if you guys are wanting to get someone involved in jujitsu, this is the way to do it. And um, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Let's check it out. Mm, check it out. I have two thoughts. There or look at this. We're picking our winner here. Nope, already chose that school. Sorry, okay. love you, but I can't. Got it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This one. Awesome. So we found a winner, and she is going to get her lion gi. And congratulations to Tori Smith. She tra she trains at Gracie Jiu Jitsu Seattle, our brand new CTC up there. Tori, congratulations. And team at Gracie Seattle, awesome work up there. I know you guys had to close soon after your opening, but stay strong. You guys got a great team, great leadership up there. Tori said she's continuing um, her pink belt progress online. Yes, and she's four-stripe white belt at Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Seattle. If you're in Seattle, go check them out. They're awesome once, of course, this reopening takes place. 
Um, Tori, congratulations. You're getting the Lion D when it comes out, and you're going to need it because you're going to continue after Women Empowered and Gracie Combatives, and you're going to continue on this path. You're going to become a certified instructor one day, and everyone's going to be looking at you, and you got to have that fresh new gi when you get down. <laughs> all right? So thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just one quick announcement. We're going to soon begin a full active schedule of live Zoom two-way video conference lessons from Gracie headquarters for all the active students in Torrance. So if you're one of our regular students and you're still active right now during this downtime, you're going to have two-way live video conference. It's going to be amazing. We're also guiding and, 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 and providing the material for CTCs around the world to do the same. So they're going to start that not this week, but the week after. Like Monday, May 11th is the kind of the general kickoff period. Many schools are already doing it, but most CTCs that aren't already will begin soon uh, in about a week or so. So you guys can look forward to that. It's totally different. Here it's fun, but it's one you way. Get to see your God, the only thing yeah. better than this would be if we could see you guys doing the techniques in your living rooms. And through these two-way video uh, virtual lessons, we're going to begin doing that. We're very excited for that. So look forward for that from us if you're one of our headquarters students or from your CTC instructor if you train at one of the amazing CTCs around the world. And if you don't have a CTC near you, go to gracieinstructor.com, find out how you can reserve your territory and begin the process of training to open a CTC. A beginner with some solid curriculum can teach newer beginners and just guide them every step of the way. You don't have to be a black belt. It's all lie, industry lies. The black belts want you to think that white belts, or sorry, that blue belts can't teach and that beginners can't teach, they can. As long as they have a passion for helping people and they have a structure to go by, they can help beginners learn the basics of jujitsu. Gracie Combatives, Women Empowered, Gracie Bullyproof, Level 1 Certified Training Centers, all you need, and then you guys climb the ladder together. It's happening all over the world. Gracieinstructor.com for more details. Thank you, Eve, for joining this party today mm -hmm. and for all the good details and for the amazing Thanks work on Women Empowered. Us, you, guys. you guys, the world is changing. The question is, are you changing with it? Thank you, guys.